Welcome back everyone, Mariah here, and in today's video I'm giving a little bit of an update. I've had maybe like three of you that are like, oh, I miss your videos, and I'm sure there's maybe 20 more of you that are like, she must be gone because she got fat again. <laughs> so um, let's see, today my topics, to give you guys a little bit of an update for the three of you that really do care, um, where have I been? And uh, let's see why YouTube is not a priority for me. I wanna be getting into that. Like, it's really gonna be a good segment on if you are considering YouTube. And uh, yeah, I'll be getting into, did I get large again? Did I gain all the weight back? Was a BBL not a success? Um, talk about recent fasting, and then uh, if I'm doing that, and then I'm gonna be talking about, I'll give a little bit of a BBL update, a little bit of everything. I know I've made videos about everything, so I'll give a little bit of a update on everything. Um, yeah, and like, I guess how I've been thinking about this channel and where I see it moving forward and kind of like what my plans and intentions are. So where have I been? In August, I started a new business here in Puerto Rico and it is just a newborn baby that needs all my love and attention. And I am really enjoying that. I feel like I got my entrepreneurial spirit back. So I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. I dropped out of college when I was 19 and I started a business and I've never really had a real job. I've just always been self-employed. And so I um, was in California visiting my family and I was just like coming up with ideas and I'm like, all right, I found the business idea. I landed, I went straight out and I bought my products and I started the business. I kind of started before I was like 100% ready just because like, just wanted to get that momentum going. And so it kind of feels like, I feel like even if I felt 100% ready and started the business, I would always feel like I was playing catch up anyways. But for me, it's like I needed that push and I needed that momentum to just get things flowing and the momentum going. Because for me, momentum is like so important, creating momentum in my life to just keep me going. So that's where I've been. Um, I <laughs> am remembering that like building out a team and delegating is definitely not my strength, has never been my strength, but gosh, I gotta get better at it. And I've learned, I learned so much about starting a business when I was 19 that it's really helped me like prioritize like, okay, like I can't just work 24 seven. I need time to like get a massage at home and I need time to like go to the beach and just not do anything for an hour because I realize that like my brain will just, work so much better and like I can tap into my creative side if I actually give my, myself and my body like the proper rest and rejuvenation that it needs versus like reaching a point of burnout. And when I look back at photos of when I was 19 and started that business, I was just like so puffy and so inflamed and my cortisol must have been off the charts, which definitely know my cortisol is higher than usual, but I just know myself and my body so much better that I can, I know that I'm setting myself up for like more sustainability, which is really, really great. Um, but yeah, no, I have not had a day off since like I started the biz business early August. And even when I went to California to visit my family for the holidays, I was still working. My phone was still ringing at 5 a.m. Honestly, I had not that great of a trip because I was just so tired and still working so much and really could not relax. So um, yeah, that's basically where I've been. It's like the business takes so much on my creative side that there's really not much left for YouTube. And YouTube is like really interesting because I guess I'll now go into like why YouTube is not a priority for me. So YouTube is not a priority for me because I am not like consistently excited about it. Um, I guess one component of it is that, um, <clears throat> one component of not being excited about YouTube is like the money's just not great. You know, it's like, it, it's more of like a hobby that like doesn't really pay much for how much of myself I've put out there. Like I made myself a very open book and it's so weird when like someone drives by and they're like, oh, hey, I've watched all 54 of your fasting videos. I'm like, cool. And then it's like, whoa, like I know nothing about this person and they know like everything about me. And that's a really, really strange place to start out from. And sometimes I do feel overexposed. There's sometimes where I'm like, I'm never sharing anything ever again on the internet. And there's other times where I'm like, I would like to share my story and like, if it helps someone, then it feels, it feels like a win-win. But it's, YouTube is not a priority because the money component is not there. I've really never like taken the time to build out a business. Like I am not good, like I need, I need a business that there's some physicality to it. Is that even a word? Because of the fact that like, 
I, that is really part of the momentum. Like I do not feel momentum sitting at a desk for like eight to 10 hours a day. Like I just want to get up and like move constantly. So the money part is why YouTube is not a priority. Also sometimes, like I said, I feel like I'm overexposing myself. And then the third thing would be that YouTube is weird because I really don't spend much time in the comments anymore. And this is the mindset that I have implemented on YouTube a while ago and I have stuck with it and it's been very beneficial for me. And that is that when someone says something nice or a compliment, I don't let it validate me. It's just neutral because when someone says something rude or inconsiderate, I also don't take it personally. So it's like, I don't allow myself to gain or lose anything from anything that is said in the comments section. Like, <laughs> I, I don't care if, what people are saying in there because if you're saying something, <laughs> this sounds super rude to my subscribers, but I mean, putting good energy in the comments, that's great. I'm not likely going to look at it or see it every once in a while, I'll jump in there. But it's like, I don't get this like, warm, fuzzily validating feeling when someone says something nice because I am not going to take anything personally that someone says it's negative. So it's basically just a draw. Oh, the back, card is full. So energetically, YouTube just feels like it's not feeding me. It's just neutral, which is weird. It's kind of like a weird situation. So that's why I do not prioritize YouTube. Um, if I was making like a ton of money on this platform, yeah, sure, I'd give it like my time and energy, but it's like I have to have my time and energy to the shit that pays the bills, you know? So, did I get fat again? No, I didn't get fat again. My weight has been super, super stable for the past, I don't know, year or so. I like looked at the graph of like my weight, which I don't really check it that often, but it's just like, um, which is fantastic. I mean, I was super consistent in the gym last year. This year has been really tough since I started my business to be consistent with the gym, but it's like on a, like a full work day, I don't have to go to the gym to get 10 to 15,000 steps. Like there is a physicality to what I'm doing. So I really actually enjoy that. So over the past um, seven months since I started my business, I've probably gone to the gym like maybe 10 times and um, it, it sucks. I wish I could get there more, but I'm trying to get better at it. Um, I've gone two times this week, so I'm really trying to get better when it comes to the gym. Like I'll do home workouts, but it's like, I know mentally like, oh, I need to lift some heavy shit right now. I really do need that. So I have been able to not really go to the gym and maintain my weight. Um, I eat super healthy. I would say I like try to treat my body like it's an athlete because I perform mentally and physically like a boss when I eat good and sleep good. And like my current eating routine is a lot of berries and beef. Like I used to just go to the store and buy like one clamshell of blueberries cause they're $10 and expensive. And I'm like, fuck it. I probably spend like $200 a month on berries. And I'm just like, you know what? Rhonda Patrick said that uh, they're good for my brain and uh, I'll believe that and I will keep continue to eat the berries. So I wanna talk about recent fasting. The only time my weight has changed was last year. I had some stressful situations that included like a total of like nine days of fasting. I was so stressed that I was not able to eat. I've only had been so stressful previously of like wanting to eat. And this is the first time in my life that I'm like, well, I'm so stressed that like I'm sick to my stomach and I can't eat. And uh, I definitely lost a little bit of weight during that time. But like with fasting, if you're not super consistent, it definitely like comes back. So I just dipped a little bit and then returned. And, um, but I wasn't doing it for weight loss. I was doing it because I seriously could not eat. Those refeeds were the worst refeeds of my freaking life. Oh my gosh, I was so sick. And I don't, I think I might've been overeating on the refeeds, but my body wasn't telling me it was full. So I was overeating it. I would, oh my gosh, I haven't felt that crappy in a really long time. It was my most failed, like the worst I have felt. I've never, go all the fasting before, never got sick on a refeed. And I was eating healthy stuff too. So that is that. Um, I am continuously intuitive eating and I love intuitive eating and I totally focus on nutrient dense foods. I am eating grass fed beef, beef organs, taking liver pills. I gotta, uh, I don't think I'm overdoing the vitamin A, but um, definitely on the lower carbon side, I'll throw in some like rice and sweet potatoes here and there, but mostly beef and berries is the most of it. Some Greek yogurt, 
I'll throw some other vegetables in there, like a lot of cauliflower, rice, and broccoli, but um, my diet has been rather clean. Um, probably overdoing the nuts. Gosh, nuts and seeds, it's like, what a debate. Are these good for me or not? Um, but I definitely feel like I'm realizing a sensitivity to dairy. Um, nothing serious, but it is what it is. With intuitive eating, which I love, and like I said, I focus on nutrient-dense foods, the only thing is like, okay, so you're hungry and you're full, all right? Those are like two spectrums. You're hungry and you're full. And then there's like an in-between inside of that, like a neutral, okay? So I feel like the gap of this neutral zone is massive for me. Like I never feel super full. Like I feel like I can eat and eat and eat and it's always just neutral. Like I'm not, I'm not hungry anymore, so I could stop eating, but I almost just want a little bit of a signal that's like, okay, we're good. And I feel like it takes so long for me to get there. Like I was meal prepping last night and I was making ground beef and beef organs and cauliflower rice. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna save this for tomorrow. And then I, I ate like half of it. And I was like, I wasn't really hungry, but I just kept eating and I really felt full and like that strange thing in there. But I would say that like overall, like my numbness is pretty high. Like my emotional numbness is high. Um, I guess like how I'm feeling my body from an eating perspective, like definitely some numbness there. Um, let's go with the quick BBL update. Best decision I ever made. Oh my gosh. The transformation is actually stupid. I came across some um, videos of the video that I made like a couple days prior and just looking at my face alone, I'm like, wow. The BBL was by far the best decision I ever made. I used to be someone that was like super anti-plastic surgery for the 20th time, the BBL was like the best thing I ever did for myself. Um, I mean, if you eat like trash and you don't exercise, are you gonna gain weight back? Probably, but I feel like maintaining my figure has been unbelievably easy, even with like dropping off and like not going to the gym as much, but there's, I'm still very physical. I still sleep well, I still take care of myself and I still try to eat nutrient dense foods. So Dr. Torres at Skin and Skinnier, I don't know, I think I spent $16,000 for the surgery, 20,000 total for like all the expenses included. Could not have spent that $20,000 better, except if it was Bitcoin, of course, but wow, unbelievable. So what does this channel look like moving forward? I'm not really sure. I might get in like unbelievably, like I'm just busy every day and I just found a moment to like squeeze a video in here, but I might uh, wake up and like not do a video for another six months again. I don't know, but I think what I would actually prefer, I have been thinking about this a bit of like where I see this particular channel. And I would like to kind of just do like random things that I talk about that are maybe like a short solo, camera's gonna die. So yeah, just like a short solo podcast style that um, like I would love to talk about. Like really though, I made this channel to create a life that you love. And so just discussing like topics of like, oh, a validation, what a fascinating topic. And like having the, the, having the, carving out the time to spend time with yourself, right? It's like, they always say, we're the average of like the five people that we spend the most time with. Well, hey, guess what? When you spend your time with nobody, guess what? You find yourself. Yeah, <laughs> just like <laughs> solo dolo, you know? And uh, I would love to just honestly talk about spending time with yourself and the strength and the power that comes within that. It's like, if you enjoy time with yourself, then you really cut out all the bullshit. You don't, I hate to say like you don't need anyone, but like you can really survive and spend a lot of time by yourself and feel fantastic. And, um, oh, there's something else I was gonna say about this. Oh, like talking about subjects of like, I think it's so interesting when people like fear being alone. Like they just, they can't do it. They've been with someone their whole life. If they are not with someone, then they jump to the next person immediately. And it's like, I always wondered like, how do people feel instantly so comfortable and truly enjoy just like spending time with someone that they barely know? And I'm like, well, if you don't really like yourself, you just have to like that person that you're spending time with a little bit more for you to like prefer being with them than by yourself. Huh, interesting. Yeah, 
I would love to talk about like how people are having less children these days, like just random topics that I don't really care if they get views or not. I would just like to talk about the discussions, but I would say one of my strengths is like feeling whole and complete, spending a lot of time by myself. And as a 31 year old, it's like never really had that serious of a relationship. I think that I can give people um, a lot of insight on how to live a life that's mostly solo. Like if you're in that era, you know, and how to be okay with it and how to like truly enjoy it and how to make the most of it because you might never get that back. If you have like a small window of like spending time by yourself, oh man, it's magic. <laughs> I love being in my own thoughts and my own space and silence and peace and mmm, love it. So that's all that I have for you today. As always, go out there and create a life that you love.